Hello everybody, Peter Soretta here from Slash Holder. <laughs> that was as fast as let's start again. Sorry. <laughs> let's go. Okay. Are you, are you oh, sure? right. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, Peter Soretta here from SlashFilm.com and I am here with... Steve Wancho with Collider.com. We're in Las Vegas at CinemaCon. The movie theater owners are here to see footage from the studios and we just got out of the Warner Brothers presentation. You're a liar. We just got out of the Sony, but now we're recording the Warner Brothers We're recording panel. this later in the day. <laughs> Whatever. They don't know that you just... Whatever. I'm spoiling. It's a spoiler. Yeah. Go okay. on. Um, so, Warner Brothers brought all their movies and all their casts and all their filmmakers here. It, it was literally a who's who of Hollywood. Um, so let's talk about the movies that we that were previewed for sure. us. To we're, gonna, we're gonna be honest here. We're gonna skip a few and we're gonna go with some highlights. So let's jump right first into the uh, DC uh, stuff. Wait, before you do that, can I just show you something real quick? Sure. Here's my phone. Watch this. Okay. I'm done. Uh, okay. So <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, War Dogs. Yeah. Todd Phillips directing, stars Jonah Hill, Miles Teller as two stoners that get into the uh, uh, gun running business. And it's based on a true story. Uh, it seems like it's going to be funny. You know, Todd Phillips, for me, is off and on. Sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great. This seems like it, it has promise. This seems like it could be really good. Yeah, yeah. I want to let everyone know real quick about Todd Phillips. The next time you interview him, make sure to ask about future projects. He will really appreciate it and want to spend a lot of time talking about them. No, not at all. Not at all. That is an inside joke that he will appreciate. Not, but no, if no, he watches no, this. It doesn't matter. The fact is, War Dogs looked actually really good. It made me laugh. I love Jonah Hill's work. If he's in this, I'm totally in. Moving on to Suicide Squad. Yeah, it looked really funny. Uh, Suicide Squad, they showed us a trailer that was kind of a Frankenstein of all the trailers that have seen been seen so far, but I, th I don't think you've seen many of the trailers, right? I watched the first yeah. one. I missed the second one, so this a lot of this was new footage to me. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't be more sold on a movie than Suicide Squad. I will literally give them my money if I could see it tomorrow. I would pay... I'm so excited for this film because of the cast, because of David Ayer, because it looks bonkers, and everything about this movie has yeah. me sold. It looks insane. It looks like fun. I hope the movie has like cool music like these trailers have. Um, yeah. I are you, are you completely it. sold? Yeah. I'm, I'm fucking sold. Like, bring me this movie today. I really want to see it. Let's talk about the other DC stuff. They, they just started filming Justice League in London, so there was a message from Zack Snyder, and he had the, uh, he had the person who's playing Flash, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Henry Cavill, Superman, and Aquaman in the shot with him, and they were basically saying, greetings from London, we wish we'd be there. Yeah. We just started filming Justice League, so spoiler, Superman's in it. <gasps> it's a real shock. As if you didn't know that was gonna be the case. Right. Um, we should also talk about, they showed maybe like a 30 second sizzle reel from Wonder Woman. Yes. And uh, There, was, there I mean, was a lot of new showed, shots in it. Yeah, it showed like Wonder Woman on a horse, Chris Pine riding a motorcycle. Uh, I mean, there was just a bunch of shots. Nothing like, like this was like incredible, but it, what hit me was how excited I am that this is a period piece and not like a contemporary gritty action movie. Yeah. A but, action movie. What's really cool about Wonder Woman is that I think it's going to, it takes place like a hundred years ago and it's going to, I think, answer where her civilization has been this whole time, yeah. how she joins us, something I think this is just, and I know nothing, but I think what's going to end up happening is she's going to have a love story with Chris Pine. Well, that seems. And maybe he gets killed or something and then she removes herself from civilization and only reemerges for Batman and Superman. So it's going to be like she goes dark. That's just my gut. Like I'm just predicting. Yeah, but um, I, 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 you're probably not wrong. Um, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, you, you can't freeze her on a block of ice. They've already done that elsewhere. So sure. I mean, listen. I think Gaul is one of the highlights of Batman and Superman. Footage looked awesome. Completely sold on Wonder Woman as well. Uh, let's move on to the horror movies. Yes, uh, Lights Out uh, is a horror movie. 
how do, how do you even describe this? It's this produced way? by James Wan, who yeah. directs uh, Conjuring. He's a horror master. Yeah. He. It's based on a short film, and it's a, a five million dollar lower budget film that's basically literally about what happens when you shut off the lights. That there's actually things in the darkness, and if the lights are on, you're safe. But the minute the lights go out, you're effed. And I think personally, the footage looks great. It looks like a real, actually scary movie. Yeah, I mean, it it, it, it has a cool premise. Because it's playing on your scare, uh, your fear of the dark, and everybody's afraid of the dark. And it seems like uh, if you can tap into those kind of primal things, then yes. you have something. And a, lo uh, a lot of the footage, like I, I talked to Teresa Palmer today, who's one of the stars, and I think a lot of the footage was done in camera. It's not like CGI, and because of that, I think that's one of the reasons the footage looks so good is that it's yeah. actually being shot. And speaking of James Wan, exactly, The Conjuring Part Two. They showed us some footage from that. I think it was like the first. It was like the real trailer. They've released a teaser trailer, but today they showed us the real trailer. Yeah, um, I mean, it looks like. I mean, it, they're basically setting it up like it's an English Amityville. Uh, I mean, it looks. This series, I feel like I. I mean, I've, we've only seen the first movie, but I feel like I could follow the series because you just have these two characters that kind of like investigate you, you can basically do a new story each time and it doesn't have to be the same thing like most sequels well, it can also, almost be an anthology movie do you know what I mean uh, because you well, have it's just basically these two people to kind Vera of Vera Farmiga yeah. and Patrick Wilson and I'm going to tell you now I loved The Conjuring um, yeah, me too. I loved it and this new one looks like it's even better like it legit looks scary and James Wan is I mean, literally one of the best horror filmmakers working, if not the best. Yeah. And this footage looks great. And what's interesting about Warner Brothers is they're going to release Conjuring in June and Lights Out in July. These are not big budget movies. So they're going after like a different segment of the market. And I, I really think it's going to work because like, these movies actually look good. It's a smart move. It uh, is. Let's move on to Nice Guys, which is the Shane Black movie. Um, it looks... Uh, like Russell Crowe, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. It looks like an old school buddy cop kind of uh, cl classic Shane Black movie. Uh, period piece set in LA. And uh, it looks really funny. <coughs> looks hilarious. Really um, funny. I will tell you that like, and maybe I'm not supposed to talk about this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I did a set visit on Nice Guys. Yep. And we saw Sizzle Reel on set. I have, we were laughing so hard. I'm like, I, I'm so giddy about this movie. I think Shane Black is, you know, a lot of you guys out there know who Shane Black is, and we know who Shane Black is, but like, you know, a lot of people also don't. He's so awesome of a filmmaker. He's a and genius. He, he's a genius. Uh, I'm so happy as Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe, because them being in it means it's going to be seen by a ton of people, and it, you know, because it's not like Iron Man. He lasted Iron Man 3. So like, you need movie stars to carry a movie yeah. like this, and it looks fantastic. That said, it's interesting. This does feel like an old school movie where it doesn't have like this super strong high concept premise. It's just kind of a buddy yes. cop kind of thing. It looks not politically correct in any way, shape, yeah, yeah. or form. And it looks like they're having the time of their lives. Russell Crowe today, when he was introducing the movie, said that uh, to corpse a scene is basically when you uh, ruin a take. And he said he ruined more takes on nice guys in one week than he did in his entire career before <laughs> from laughing so much. And it looks it. You want to talk about Central Intelligence. Uh, we'll just touch on it real quick. Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart. Dwayne Johnson uh, is a CIA agent, basically pulls in Kevin Hart. It's like the buddy cop where, uh, and they get together. Uh, the reason I think it could be really good is the director. Uh, he, pre and I'm butchering his name, uh, wrote Marshall. Yeah, the last name is Marshall. Uh, he lasted We're the Millers, and that's a really funny movie. Still haven't seen that one. Oh, it's it's really worth your time. So because of that, wrote fucking I can't believe I can't Rowan? remember. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The point is, I'm giving it a huge possibility because a they're releasing it in the heart of summer. B I love Dwayne Johnson and I love Dwayne Johnson, but I wasn't I don't know this didn't maybe it's my dislike of Kevin Hart kind of I think you're missing sways. the boat on <laughs> Kevin can be very funny. Anyway, yeah. I'm willing to give it a chance. Let's jump into Tarzan. Tarzan. Uh, t uh, the interesting thing about Tarzan. Have we seen any footage of Tarzan so far? I think they released a trailer, trailer? but I didn't watch it. Um, it looked kind of cool. I mean, it looks kind of Planet of the Apes meets Jungle Book. I mean, it looks uh, Tarzan swinging through the trees in live action, even though it's probably heavily CG. Looks awesome. 
Sure. Um, it looks. Uh, I was just. Looks, I'm. I'm going to say something brutally honest, which could get me in trouble, but I'm yeah. just going to say it. I've been hearing some bad buzz on Tarzan, and yeah, like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. that. Yeah. I mean, like bad buzz to the point where like people are very nervous about it. And but you didn't think the trailer was good that they showed us? Now let me put the caveat. Okay. In. Today was my first time seeing any footage, and even if it has bad buzz, I thought the footage looked good. Like at the, going into this presentation, I was saying to myself, "Does anyone want to see a new Tarzan movie? Like at all? Does anyone care? Do fourteen-year-olds want to see Tarzan?" And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I thought the footage looked really good. And like the apes and everything, I think are motion capture, which is the reason it took a while for post, which could explain why people are thinking bad buzz. Yeah. Um, but I really like Margot Robbie and Christoph Waltz and uh, Skarsgård. The uh, yeah. Alec, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I thought the footage looked good. It's just, I really did. It's interesting that we're getting all these movies set in the wild, like Tarzan and Jungle Book and the other Jungle Book movie and Skull Island, and it feels like they're all kind of different shades of the same thing. So I would like, agree with that. Yeah. Um, let's move on to animation. Sure. They showed us a scene from Lego Batman, which I am super excited about. And the scene showed uh, Michael Sarah. He voices uh, Dick Grayson. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, Alfred tells Batman that he needs to take responsibility and um, deal with his deal with the kid he adopted. And he's like, "What kid did I adopt?" <laughs> yeah. So the kid comes to the the Bat Cave and is basically wowed by everything. And we get to the origin story of how. Uh, Dick Grayson gets his Robin outfit, which I will not spoil for you, but it's it's hilarious. There is also a lot of Easter eggs in that scene. I don't know yes. if you noticed. Um, I mean, a lot, and I don't want to spoil talk anything. To you after this, but a, a lot of Easter eggs. Um, I laughed out loud a lot during the yeah. Lego Batman footage. That was the funniest thing I've seen at CinemaCon so far. It looks so good. Um, and then after that, they showed us some uh, footage from Lego Ninjago. Ninjago. Yeah. Can't pronounce it. The other Lego line. That was my, our first time world premiere of that footage. Yeah. And they showed a brief scene from the Lego Movie Two. Uh, not seen like a, what? Like just. I mean, it was a fast clip. Well, they had Chris, the Chris Pratt's character uh, with like some facial hair, yeah. and uh, but I mean, like, it was a, you know world premiere footage. Yeah. Um, I loved the Lego Movie, uh, and the footage they showed today looked fantastic. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, the last and final thing is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Uh, they showed us uh, the same trailer that just came out, but they also showed us some, a, lot, a bunch of behind-the-scenes uh, footage. I think they were laying it on pretty thick that basically J.K. Rowling is heavily Very. involved in Very. this film. Uh, we saw footage of her on set, and basically how she didn't spend that much time on set. The, like, that she's more like involved with this than she was the Harry well, Potter movie. For, for people that don't know, yeah. she wrote the screenplay. And she's the one who's like, this could be a trilogy. Like, here's the thing, like, she's done with Harry Potter, so now she has more time, because she's not writing these books, to actually be invested in making movies. And for her, it must be a nice new challenge. You know, um, I will say that, being honest, she's never written a screenplay before. Yeah. So there's that element of who's going to tell her no. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, who, you has, make a good point. who has the balls to tell her, um, yeah, you're not doing a good job. You know, like, there's a delicate balance. Saying that, David Yates, who directed the last few Harry Potters, David Heyman, who produced all of them, very involved in, the, in this movie. And, and it, I, I love that it's, it's set in America in a uh, film, period setting. Filmed in London. Yeah. <laughs> well, still. Right. Apparently, they built the 1920s <laughs> set of uh, New York at Leavesden, and I guess it was a jaw-dropping, holy F set. Where people were like losing it because it was so insane. Yeah. Uh, that's Harry Potter money being spent. Um, but that's all we saw from Warner Brothers. Uh, what Wait, do you, what you think of Fantastic Beasts? Uh, the footage. I mean, it looked great, but I, I mean, it was mostly the trailer that we've seen so far. But I and, didn't see and, the trailer, so that was my I first footage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's magical and it looks like fun. I mean, I and, you know what? I'm honestly excited to explore the Wizarding World without. Harry Potter and those characters. Do you know what I mean? Like from a different Absolutely, view, yes. a different time, a different place. Well, that, this sort of goes to what Star Wars is doing with the anthology movies. Yes. Yeah. Like this is essentially a Harry Potter anthology trilogy about the same you know characters, assuming it's successful. I would love to explore more stories in the Harry Potter universe because I love the universe and I love the characters. Um, as long as they're interesting and as long as Rowling gets her blessing. I don't want to go off on a rant, but I just think it's weird that this is an adaptation of a textbook that she created that's about beasts and it has no story whatsoever. 
if she was going to write a script for this, why not just write the book? She didn't have the publisher now, and then be like, let's make a movie out of this book. Sure. Listen, and she, I just seems I, the whole, whole thing. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm excited for it, though. I hear what you're saying. My thing is, she's earned my trust. Yeah. She has created one of the all-time best uh, book series in the history of man. Literally, I put Harry Potter on that level because it it combined all these different types of archetypes and stories, but also united like generations. You know, you had little kids and really old yeah. adults reading the same series, and I can't tell you the last time that's ever happened. Besides like the Bible. Yeah. You know? The, the thing I loved about Harry Potter is it made it cool to read again. Yeah, and when was the last time people yeah. got up at like midnight to go buy a book? Yeah. Exactly. It's fucking crazy. And for that alone, I give her carte blanche to do whatever she wants. Oh yeah. No, I'm not I'm not complaining. It just seems weird how the whole pro you know, the whole thing came together. Sure. I'm still on board. Um the other stuff from the Warner Brothers presentation, <laughs> these are the highlights. You have anything else you want to add? No, that's it. Uh where can we find more of your stuff? Uh, slashfilm.com and twitter.com slash slash film. Uh, you can find me on Collider and Collider Frosty on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, look for more video blogs soon.